here in Las Vegas. USA Basketball opening training camp in preparation for the summer games in Rio. And Warriors teammates Kevin Durant, Clay Thompson, and Draymond Green all taking part here in Vegas. And here's a little bit of what KD had to say after practice. It was good. You know, I was just trying to fill the team out, fill out. You know, we went, our roles on the team and, uh, you know, with the sets we're going to run and defensive scheme. So it was good. It was good to get back out in the team setting. And uh, it's a great playing with these great players, man. I'm excited. Yeah, I mean, when you have a mutual respect for each other, it's kind of easy to, to get together and bond, especially um, when, you, you know, when you're competing against all these guys. So, you know, it's just a matter of you getting in front of them, you know. It is, and, and I've had guys that I didn't know. 2012, they're my you know, really good friends now, but just having that mutual respect, I think that's what makes the friendship coming together a little easier. No, I mean, it's basketball. You know, it's just basketball. We're excited to play basketball. We got one goal and one goal only, is to win. And nobody cares about stats or who plays or whatever. We're just trying to come out there and win. So, you know, it's we try. you can't put too much pressure on yourself. It's a game, first off, and we love to play this game. But we're going to have fun in the process. But we're going to be super prepared and focused every day. And you can catch KD, Draymond, and Clay at Oracle Arena coming up very soon. It's USA Basketball taking on China at Oracle Arena on Tuesday, July 26th. With USA Basketball in Vegas, for Warriors TV, I'm Lawrence Scott. Hey there, and welcome into this live fresh edition of SportsCenter. I'm Zubin Mahenti, and consider this tonight as there's far more basketball taking place on the Vegas Strip than just the Summer League. Team USA is working out in the desert to get ready for the Olympic Games, where one guy on the roster has a chance to do something no American male hooper ever has before, win three gold medals, it's actually mellow. Would you believe that? Nobody except him has a chance to do it. Of course, he's got the college title, still waiting for the pro title. Might be waiting for a while. And he may not be waiting that much longer, though, to be standing on the podium in Stars and Stripes once again. The team practicing out in Vegas, getting it going. The run of tune-ups we'll tell you about in just a bit. All into the watchful eye of Coach K, who's been marvelous since taking over. Hard not to be with this collection of talent. Even if the constellation of star power is a little dimmer than in years past. Bottom line, off and running. Coach K happy with day one in the desert. Well, the main thing is, you know, how excited we are to represent the United States. We have six new guys who haven't played on any of the teams and then uh, uh, we always talk about how we're going to live together so we have what we call a standards meeting and we get input from the guys and it was very good just a good group really good group we all expect to win gold we respect our opponents you can't take anybody lightly mm -hmm. uh, it's cool to see how much better the world's gotten um, you know you look at teams like france spain australia argentina uh, Lithuania has always is giving us some problems. The list goes on. Right. So uh, it's cool to see how much the game of basketball has grown globally. And if we respect our opponent, I think we'll be in a great position to win gold. But now it's a new, it's a new group of guys, a new batch of guys. And I get a chance to go out there, uh, kind of be the leader of the team, uh, lead these guys, uh, and just you know, kind of enjoy it. You know, for me, it's, it's about going over there, having fun. Getting that, getting that feeling back, getting that fun feeling back and enjoyment back, you know, and trying to get another gold medal. Which, as I mentioned, would be three for him. Here's the Golden Dozen. These are some big-time names. But here's the most interesting thing. Only two guys on this roster have Olympic experience. Carmelo and KD. That's all. It's been a long, long time since you've been able to say that for team U.S. So our Ramona Shelburne saw some of those guys actually competing against each other in the NBA Finals. And now they're teammates, at least for a bit. Ramona is with the Team USA group in Vegas. You're covering training camp for them out there. I got to ask you the bigger story. The guys we actually saw on the screen, those big names, or Ramona, the big names that decided to pass on going to Brazil. Well, I think the biggest story was the guys who passed on Brazil coming into this. But now that they're all here, the big story is the guys who are here. I spoke to Jim Beheim, who's been an assistant with Team USA for a long time. And he goes, you know what's great about this team? These guys who are here, they want to be here. They're hungry. They have something to prove. And he looked over at Jimmy Butler and Paul George. These guys are first timers on this team here. And he goes, those guys are hungry. They want to be here. They want to win this. They have something to prove in these Olympics. And, you know, I think Carmelo Anthony obviously has a chance to, to win three Olympic gold medals. Kevin Durant is going to be one of the leaders of 
of this team. Uh, you know, he's obviously getting some time to hang out with his new teammates. But I think the, the real story is now that they're here, it's about who's here and who's decided to be part of Team USA. That's a great point. Obviously, Bayheim and Carmelo, of course, go a ways back. Mm -hmm. Got him his championship. And I wanted to follow up on one thing you just said with Kevin Durant getting a little bonding time with Clay Thompson and Draymond Green as they get set for a regular season, which is going to be unlike any other, which I know you'll be chronicling here in the fall through the spring. Mm -hmm. What's it like for them to be together right now? What's the net benefit? Yeah, you know, it was, it was funny. We're just watching them play together, and I realized, wow, this is the first time they've actually <laughs> practiced together with Draymond Green and Clay Thompson. And you know, we, we asked Kevin Durant afterwards, um, you know, how, is this going to help you come October? And he he really wasn't having that. He was he said, you know what, I know these guys, and when we all get on the basketball court in October, that we're gonna we're smart players. We're gonna figure out how we're gonna play together. Right now, he's focused on Team USA and leading this team. But you know, one of I think it's interesting watching him go through this, knowing that now he is a part of the Golden State Warriors and not the Oklahoma City Thunder. I mean, there's there's a little awkward moments there. I mean, we I saw Matt Tumbleson, who's the public relations director for the Oklahoma City Thunder, walked over to Kevin Durant and they had a big hug. It's the first time they've seen each other since he made a decision to leave. And so there's a lot of those moments there. Victor Oladipo, who just got traded to Oklahoma City, he's on the select team. Hi, I thought we were going to be teammates. <laughs> With, you know, there, there's a few of those moments that, that Kevin Durant's going to have to get through this week that, that can be pretty awkward. And, and I think going forward, especially as we start the new season, it helps him to have guys like Draymond and Clay that are his new teammates that sort of insulate him from some of that criticism and awkwardness. Yeah, it's a great point. If it's going to be inevitable, you might as well get it going sooner rather than later just to get it out of the way. Before I let you go, mm -hmm. to me, a great story. The best story, bar none in Vegas, is Paul mm -hmm. George being back in Sin City, the same place where he had the grotesque leg injury a couple years ago oh. wearing a team usa jersey he's donning it again i know you spoke to pacers management about what it means for mm -hmm. him to be there and the fact that he is there can you tell me about that conversation yeah you know, I was standing up there uh, in the balcony where we get to watch him practice, sitting with Kevin Pritchard and Nate McMillan, new head coach of the Pacers, and, and I started reliving it, right? I was sitting behind the stanchion two years ago when he broke his leg, and Brian Windhorst says to me, oh, my God, he broke his leg, and I, I couldn't see it because my view was obstructed, and Kevin Pritchard was right there, and he was reliving it, and Nate McMillan just looked at us and said, stop talking about it. I don't want to think about that. I don't even want to bring it up. <laughs> Paul George is here. He's healthy. They're happy he's playing again, and, you know, ultimately, Kevin Pritchard said to me, he goes, Look, it's basketball. These guys are going to play, and this is this is something he wants to do, and we've, we're really happy he's out here and playing with Team USA again. It's great to see a smile on his face one more time. Pritchard, the general manager, Nate McMillan, the new head coach mm -hmm. of the Indiana Pacers, so the Brain Trust is there watching their marquee guy. Our Ramona Shelburne watching Team USA as they get set for Rio next month. Ramona, thanks very much. So I mentioned we'd tell you what the upcoming schedule is. Here it is. We'll start Friday against Argentina. Manu and Scola from the NBA will be there. We'll play twice against China, including one at Oracle Arena. Originally, the tickets weren't selling that well because no Steph on this team. But since Durant signed, I'm guessing the tickets are going quickly by the bay. They'll wrap it up on the first day of August against. Holly Holm, best women's boxer in MMA ever, offers the biggest challenge of Bronda's career. Ready to defend for the first time. And she is something else, and it's great to have her on SportsCenter tonight. Of course, we're talking about Holly Holm back in action Saturday night in Chicago. Before we look ahead to your fight and your opponent, we'll do that. I want you to take a look back at the ESPYs. You won the ESPY for best upset of the year in your win over Ronda Rousey, which shook the UFC to its core, and the women's division certainly had some reverberating effects. When you think back to that fight now that you were right in the midst of, that the world was watching about and buzzing, what do you remember the most? Yeah, obviously, the victory, any, any fight, that feeling is, is that that high that you're chasing, you know, so, and that was definitely one of the biggest highs I ever felt after a fight, but I also am taken back to how I felt before the fight, some of the nerves, just taking it day by day, you know, coming off of a loss now, going into this fight, uh, got some nerves, getting, getting ready and getting uh, geared up for the fight this coming weekend, and just... I need to stay focused on it, you know, one more week of focus on this fight, and I just want it to be all worth it, all the hard work. 
No question about it. You're taking it day by day, but that certainly will be a memorable day for a lot of people that follow this particular sport. i got to ask you, just a quick follow-up here. UFC President Dana White was pretty pointed in some of his criticism towards you and your management team for taking that fight with Misha Tate and then not waiting for the much, much anticipated bout with Ronda Rousey that so many people wanted to see after you stunned her that night. Do you have any regrets about taking that Tate fight? No, I don't have any regrets about taking that fight because I want to fight because I'm passionate about fighting. I don't want to keep, you know, I don't want to just sit aside and I don't want to just hold the belt <laughs> and look at it. You know, I wanted to fight and that's what, that's what I'm in this sport for. I, I'm passionate about this sport. I wanted to fight. I wanted to be active. Um, and we still don't really know if Rhonda's coming back and when. Um, and she might, but I'm glad I didn't sit around and wait for it. My only regret is, um, you know, not making that a victory for me. Oh, speaking of victory, you've got a chance to do that on Saturday, and all the passion you talk about can be poured into the octagon. When you take on a fighter that maybe doesn't have the household recognition that you or Misha or Rhonda does, Valentina Shevchenko, give me a scouting report on her. She's really tough. She has a a lot of experience. She has a lot of Muay Thai experience before she even got into MMA and she still has a couple more fights than myself in MMA. She's very, very tough and um, I mean tougher than, than a lot of the girls in the division in a lot of ways. So I know I have my hands full. This is definitely not an easy fight. Do you think if you win that fight Saturday you will get a title shot as a reward? You know, I just need to I need to focus on this fight Saturday, and then whatever you know opportunity comes after is is great. But I'm sure it's going to be a lot based on how I perform Saturday. So I don't want to look past that. I want to make sure I perform Saturday, and and you know. That's all I'm really looking at right now. All right, before I let you go, I want to end this on a little bit of a, a lighter note here. A lot of your fans may not even know this, that your father is a preacher. He raised three kids, including yourself. So I guess I often wonder, when you have that sort of profession and do that for a living and grow up in that sort of household, how does one of his kids turn out to be one of the biggest stars in UFC? <laughs> you know, I feel like uh, a lot of people... You know, ask about that and ask how my dad feels about it. You know, how do you feel it, that you're in, you know, a violent sport? And it's like, no, this is a sport of passion. And, you know, it's, it's not like you pick on someone off the street to fight. This is two people <laughs> that sign a contract. This is mutual agreement here. And there's a lot of respect and a lot of passion involved in this. So I think I've always had a competitive nature uh, about me. And my parents have always taught me to, you know, follow a passion, follow a dream. And, taught me to not want to give up on something and so you know whether that went into you know anything in my life I think I don't think they were super shocked that I got into something really competitive like this but um, they've always supported it from the get-go so I know you said in plenty of interviews that your father taught you compassion and competitiveness we'll see both on display Saturday some competitiveness and maybe a lack of compassion at least in the octagon for Shevchenko hey. on Saturday mm -hmm. and then we'll see as you said what comes next? You got to win that fight before anything else That's happens right. down the way. Best of luck Saturday night. Thank you. I appreciate it.